Hello everyone, this is proud CB wife Becky for day number four. Just wanted to report, even though yesterday I cleaned the house, yes, that was a big goal to clean the house because I dusted and I hate dusting. So that was a major goal for me to hit. So thank you for all your comments that you're leaving on my videos. It's glad to know that somebody else is watching me do the videos. And I have gone four days without a soda and I have stuck to my Bible reading plan. Um, so I think everything's going good, it's positive, and now I'm actually fo looking forward to doing these videos every day. So today I'm going to show you um, how to cover um, any kind of box, um, like to alter a box. This recipe box comes from close to my heart and um, it has a magnetic closure. They run about $6.95. It's a little high, but it's a good quality, sturdy box. Um, kind of like what uh, the recollection boxes or the configuration boxes from Tim Holtz. It's kind of like that same material. So the first one I did, I covered, and because it's a recipe box, I wanted to mod podge it and do a coating. But when I coated it, because I used my ATG gun, the paper it rippled like really bad and it was so ugly I had to rip the paper off and it, I was so discouraged and I didn't know what to do so I tried my quick dry adhesive and it dried too quick before I could get it on so I found my Mod Podge and I was like hmm it's a glue and um, so I YouTubed it and other people had used it but even though that it's not the archival because there's one for paper I thought well it won't hurt to use it I've already had to rip the paper off so when I ripped the paper off I just took a sanding block and sanded it you know because you can fix your boo-boos don't be discouraged and so I just tried so I'm going to show you how with Mod Podge um, you can cover the boxes and it's really easy I was a little bit intimidated but it got easier so I just took the Mod Podge and brushed all over and I did the box versus the paper and I just brushed it on just even coat doesn't have to be too thick and then it gives you a little bit of moving time to move it around to line it up and because you've already inked up the edges um, you don't have to worry about getting it precise because you cut just a little bit inside. So I take a piece of clean um, copy paper and just rub it down. Um, I would use a brayer but um, it's the three-dimensional box so it, I don't think it would work. But this worked just fine. And it goes on so smooth. And um, you just do the rest of the box this way. And it's so easy to um, to do a box to alter um, once you have a good ruler and you know how to do your measuring uh, you don't even really and I'll show you on the lid part um, when I got to the lid all I did was took a piece of paper and put it measured it up like on this way and then flipped it over and trace the line and then just cut inside the line and it matches up really really good so the paper collection that I'm using is from Nana's Kitchen and it's really cute because they're a recipe box and there's different papers um, that you can use so it just goes it goes so quick to use the Mod Podge so this one I'll just kind of lay, oops, this way. And get it on there. So that's how it's going to look, and I'll finish it up. Um, I made my own rosettes. Maybe tomorrow I'll show you a video. Um, I don't have the Tim Holtz uh, rosette die, but I made my own rosette. And, um, uh, this is from the Tim Holtz um, flower die here, and I made a flower 
from that and I think they came out pretty good from not having a dye just you know the matching paper so um, it's not that difficult to line up the paper and just uh, do your own altering you know anything it could be you know something that you got out of the $99 bin and then after I covered all the box I went ahead and I did a coating of the Mod Podge and it didn't ripple, it didn't peel, it nothing. So any of the corners that I had that kind of lifted, I just kind of stuck the glue down there and um, stuck it down. And, you know, it's not going anywhere. The only problem I found with this box, and maybe it's just about anything that's put together with paper, is on the corners here, it's kind of starting to peel. And it carried through to the other side. So all I did was cover it with paper on the inside and kind of reinforced it with um, with some heavier cardstock on this side. Um, but one of the other ones, the box that I did, I just carried it the paper all the way down into the inside and kind of did did that. And I did it with scraps. So it's a cute little box. Um, I'm gonna put recipes. I'm gonna show you another day how. Um, I used uh, the From My Kitchen Cricut cartridge to cut the the dividers for the recipe box and then I'm gonna fix them up with different sayings from also from that cartridge to fix up the box but so these boxes on the outside are done and then on this one I used a Martha Stewart punch that I got for Christmas and whoops um, I don't even know what that one's called but it's lace and it's so pretty it does such a good job in cutting but um, with the Nana's kitchen paper this didn't work with any of the punches so I just took a part of the paper and that's what I'm going to use to cover that one so and this one again um, put your Mod Podge all over it and uh, line it up so something that's going to get a lot of use um, I'd go with the Mod Podge and then I think yesterday on Tim Holt's blog um, he did a video about covering his uh, configuration boxes and he suggested using this Studio J um, I think that's what it is it's um, a cover medium so I can't I can't think off the top of my head exactly what it's called but um, it's a Claudine Hel Helmet product from Ranger. And he used it like um, Mod Podge, but he said it was, wasn't as wet as Mod Podge. So it's a little bit drier. But um, I just used what I have. And I think every crafter has Mod Podge um, in their supplies. So um, just wanted to report.